started. All right. Today we're going to talk about understanding acid exposure or exposure of toxins in general. Um, some of the ways you can be exposed to harmful chemicals is um, off-gassing. Now off-gassing, uh, and here we're not talking about, you know, what your dad does on the couch. We're talking about the release of volatile organic compounds from building materials, okay? So not from, from biological organisms. Um, now these compounds can affect the indoor air quality of various indoor environments. And we see here a picture of, of paints. And paints um, can give off fumes while they're you know wet in particular. But even after they're dry, there's certain types of paints that uh, they found, you know, like leaded paints that would actually give off um, toxic materials and would affect the health of people exposed. Uh, pesticides, of course, are also a, a concern these days. Um, there are substances that can be used to kill fungi, insects, animals, or plants that are considered as pests. Um, but these pesticides can have, uh, you know, an adverse effect on people that might consume you know, say a, a vegetable that had been grown where pesticides was used to get rid of the pests. Then you have this residue, the pesticide, and then it, you know, is ingested by the person. And that's not good. Um, now we're just going to take a look here. You know, insecticides would be used to remove insects that may cause damage and disease. So the purpose is, is you know, positive. Um, the types of compounds that might be used are halogenated hydrocarbons or organic compounds. Herbicides could be also be used to get rid of unwanted plants like weeds that may compete for sunlight and nutrients in uh, commercial crops or food crops um, and affect the growth of desired plants. And you can use various organic compounds for that. Or fungicides that can be used to protect crop plants and animals from fungi that can cause disease. Uh, and generally you have phenols involved in fungicides. Now some considerations to be used when, when using pesticides are, are target specificity. And this is the range of organisms that can be affected by a pesticide. Like if you can be so specific with uh, a pesticide that it only will have a negative effect on that pest, then, you know, even if someone was to inadvertently ingest some of that pesticide, that wouldn't affect them, okay? But usually that target specificity is, is not that narrow. Um, you can have things like broad-spectrum pesticides, which is a chemical substance that can control the population of a wide variety of organisms, but that also means that its effect on unintended targets, so to speak, could be larger as well. And then there's the toxic, toxicity of the pets, pesticide that needs to be considered. And this is the ability of the substance to cause damage to living tissue. Now living tissue could be, you know, the tissue of the pest, or it can be the tissue of the consumer of something that was exposed uh, to some of these toxic substances. Now these toxic substances can impair the function of the body system or even cause death when ingested, inhaled, or absorbed through the skin. And there are lots of pesticides that if, you know, experienced in large concentrations, if a person experienced them, uh, it could definitely kill a human uh, pretty quick. <clears throat> now, there's classifications, the LD50 and the LC50, that we're going to talk about here. Now, the LD50 is a dosage of a chemical substance that given all at once would kill half of the population. So that's where the 50 comes from. It means that 50% of the population um, would be killed by one application at a uh, prescribed dosage. Okay. Now the LD, that should be LC50, is a concentration of chemical substance. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see, half the population, uh, different, okay, 
Now let me see if I remember that designation here. Um, oh, the LC50 is concentration. Okay, D is dosage, C is concentration. So that should be a C here. And the LC50 is a concentration that will kill half the population. Okay, so they're they're pretty similar, really. It's just uh, it, with you use the word dosage or you use the words concentration, it's pretty much the same type of measurement. And that's why in this table you have LD or LC being referred to. Um, so, for example, if you want to get rid of a uh, aquatic invertebrate like a Daphnia, a uh, water flea, then you would need 25 milligrams per liter to to be the LD50 or the LC50 number. Rainbow trout would be 358 milligrams per liter for a specific substance. Uh, frog might be 359, earthworm 350 milligrams per kilogram, quail. So this rating will tell an individual using a pesticide how much should be used to kill a pest and how much could be dangerous to uh, you know an unintended target okay like a mallard duck or something like that <clears throat> so some considerations when using pesticides uh, one of those considerations are drift the transfer of a pesticide by wind or air currents from a location where it's sprayed to an under unintended location okay and here you can see um, a diagram of you know you applied the pesticide here it evaporates transport and is precipitating into the wastewater which runs off into the groundwater and into the aquatic life and then can affect the aquatic um, ecosystem or you can have dry deposition on you know ha inhabited rural well inhabited residential areas. Um, another consideration is the grasshopper effect. And this is a transport transport of, of pesticides that results from their evaporation in warmer climates and condensation and deposition in colder climates. Now because the warmer climates, you know, they have more heat, therefore they have more evaporation. And then as those materials move you know, away from the central latitudes towards more northern latitudes, you would have this tendency to um, to condense and you know deposit. Uh, persistence is another consideration. The resistance of some chemical substance to be growing to being um, broken down by bi biological or chemical means. Uh, there are some substances that will really not degrade very quickly at all. Um, you know, like your PCPs and, and stuff like that. And those are, you know, more dangerous um, to use than those that will break down quickly uh, by natural means. Now here's a bit of a picture of the grasshopper effect where you're transporting the pesticides from evaporation, let's say somewhere close to the equator that air warms up and then you have your normal air currents that are caused by the warming effects okay and then all of that pesticide that was used in one spot ends up being deposited in a, a specific latitude okay and a lot of those could be halogenated hydrocarbons <clears throat> Uh, eutrophication is another um, issue. Now, eutrophication is more connected with, with fertilizers. Fertilizers could contain nitrogen and phosphorus, and these nutrients would cause an increase in phytoplankton. Okay, and then the phytoplankton, <coughs> um, you know, basically have what's called an LJ bloom. Okay, all these phytoplankton algae um, will bloom, die, and as they decay, they will take up 
oxygen out of the water. And once the water, you know, becomes deoxygenated, then larger aquatic organisms will die, and then smaller aquatic organisms will die, and then most of the aquatic organisms will be dead due to a lack of oxygen, and also the fact that this algae bloom will block the sunlight from getting lower. Okay, and then the grasses that may be actually producing oxygen in the body of water would die off due to a lack of light, and then you'd have a compounded problem as far as deoxygenation goes. Um, now here's a, a bit of a example of, of how you could control a pest and in this case the examination is the birth of army worms. Now one of the practices for controlling these army worms is tilling which is plowing the fields after harvest and removing stubble from fields and this prevents the accumulation of snow and exposes insects, insect eggs to lower temperatures so if you do this tilling you know, in the fall then you end up killing a certain degree amount of population and it's going to decrease protection for the hatching larva. Now you can also use biological control strategies such as introducing viruses or other insects and this would reduce the you know population by causing a disease or virus or weakening the organism. Uh, planting alternative crops is one possibility though I think this one's a little bit I don't know, sketchy as a solution because you may economically have to grow a certain crop that that is um, you know valuable. If you plant something that's not very valuable then uh, it won't be viable. Okay, but if you did plant an alternative crop, let's say you found one that was equally um, viable economically, then you could reduce the available food to the army worms and reduce their population that way, starve them out. And also the use of selective pesticides which would kill the insect population. And you know what's used quite often is pesticides and tilling because those are both fairly easy to do. Um, you know, the biological controls of course are more difficult and the alternative crops are not always viable. The dirty dozen. Now the dirty dozen here refers to 12 organic pollutants or POPs that were identified by the Stockholm Convention as being the really bad ones. Okay, your aldrin, your endrin, your dialdrin, your hexachlorobenzene. That one sounds bad, doesn't it? It's got a big name must be worse than the others. Oh, uh, actually it's not that bad. But anyway, chlorodane, me I wouldn't have a shooter of it, but you know, let's see, your dioxins are definitely worse, furans, your DDTs and PCPs. I'd say these ones at the bottom, those are the real nasties. Anyway, your hep heptachlor, I haven't heard that one, myrix, toxaphene, all these are bad, uh, but your DDT, that's well known for its uh, negative effect on um, you know, certain organisms, particularly those that are top of food chains due to biological amplification, okay, concentrating. Um, PCPs, very dangerous. Dioxins can be cancer causing in small doses. And your furans. So all those, nasty. <clears throat> anyway. So that is really a discussion of, um, you know, understanding different types of toxins and exposure to those toxins and identifying some categories of toxins that have been um, seen as, as ones that need to be monitored and, and uh, something done about them. All right, so once you've listened to this tutorial, make sure that you submit a tutorial summary. Have a good day.